Alright, so quite possibly like a decent handful of you guys watching this, I have been a car enthusiast for around 99.9% .9 of my life. Like, by the time I was four years old, I had already picked up on, like, what a Skyline was, the RX-7, Supra, Evo, etc. Have Grand Charisma 2 to thank for that. I literally don't know what it's like to live and not be in the cars. Because, like I said, I've pretty much been in the cars ever since I was old enough to comprehend what a car was. Sometimes I feel like I'm in my own little world as opposed to the people around me who aren't in the cars. I've been in situations like, say, me and a friend are walking through a parking lot and, like, we're looking for a restaurant or something, and I'm like, oh, it's over there next to that white Evo, and they'll be like, Zach, I don't know what the fucking Evo is. Just point to the restaurant. See, to me, I instinctually call it an Evo because I know it's an Evo. To them, it's just a sedan with a wing on it. Now, me personally, I only have like a small niche circle of friends that are like super into it. Like I am, I have a couple friends like here and there that are like kind of into it, but not into it enough to invest in it. If you kind of know what I mean. As far as like the broader spectrum of my friend group goes, they all have hobbies and passions of their own. So they all understand like why I'm into it. And for that, I am thankful. For the longest time, I have genuinely wondered, like, what do people who literally don't know anything about this hobby, like, people who see cars as nothing more than a machine that gets from point A to point B, what do they think of people who are in this hobby? Like, what do they think of, like, the cars that they drive? Like, someone just driving down the road in their car that gets from point A to point B, and they see, like, a heavily modified car with something like wheels, aero, exhaust, etc. Like, what goes through their head, like, if anything at all? So, I decided I'm gonna try to have that question actually be answered. So, a couple weeks ago, I took the Reddit and I asked, what do non-car people think of modified cars and slash or the people who drive them? And the question didn't explode, it didn't make the front page or anything like that, but I did get a few interesting responses to which I will be responding to in this video. So, why don't we get started? By the way, if my responses make me sound like a sarcastic asshole, uh, that's not my intention whatsoever. That's just my personality. The first comment appeared literally within like 15 seconds of me posting this question. I didn't even have the time to explain myself, and that comment would be, Y'all look stupid. Well, Batman has an opinion, and he just jumped straight to it. No sugarcoating whatsoever. Can't help but kind of respect that. Alright, well that was enlightening, so moving on. Alright, so the second response is... Seems like a waste of money for a bunch of people with something to prove to themselves. The result is often noisy and annoying. Honest opinion. I intentionally didn't reply to any of these responses, and I kind of wish I had because I'm trying to wrap my head around this comment. Like, what are we trying to prove to ourselves? Like, why does someone who modifies their car have to have something to prove to themselves? Like, I don't have anything to prove to myself. I'm just trying to make a fun car. Prove that I can make a fun car? I don't, I don't know. I mean... It's a mystery to me. And pretty much any car enthusiast will point this out is non-car people unknowingly spend copious amounts of money on things that they see as normal purchases. Like to me, like spending a thousand dollars on an iPhone is a waste of money or like spending like two hundred dollars on a white t-shirt because it has a Supreme logo on it or a waste of money or like, like a five hundred dollar pair of Jordans. Like why, why spend that much money just to get something that has a certain brand logo on it? Like, what are you trying to prove to yourself by doing that? Like, if we obviously have something to prove to ourselves by spending a crap ton of money on our cars, you obviously have something to prove to yourself by spending a crap ton of money on electronics or clothing or stuff like that. Stuff that's kind of unnecessary. Or not stuff that's unnecessary, stuff that's necessary, but stuff that is made unnecessary by spending that much of a premium on it. Now something I want to elaborate on before anyone else tries to, and that's the fact that obviously not every single person on the planet who's not a car enthusiast goes out and buys a bunch of stupid shit that they don't need constantly, although I feel that everyone is guilty of buying expensive stuff that they don't necessarily need at least every once in a while. But I pointed that out because for me personally, the people I've met in my life who are the ones who go out and buy a bunch of expensive stupid stuff that they don't need are the ones that question the hobby so much and say that we are wasting money by spending our money on car parts and stuff like that. I would say that most people who manage their finances modestly are the ones that are more accepting of this hobby. Alright, second comment is, I wonder what it's like to spend $60,000 on a $20,000 car. Me too, dude. <laughs> Try $2,000 car. Trust me, like, I wish I had $20,000 to spend on a car because there's a long list of cars that I could buy for $20,000, mostly old imports, but kind of a side point. So what this comment is saying is why spend a ton of money on a cheap car? 
And to respond to that question is honestly, no matter how cheap or expensive the car is, nothing compares to something that you created yourself. And regardless of how much you spend on the car, how much you purchased it for, how much money you put into it, it's something that you thought of, something that you modified yourself or had a shop modify for you to your own liking. I don't, I don't judge. But it's something that you created to your own standard. And in getting into a car that you have modified is it it's comes with a feeling of knowing that it's something that you created something that came from your own thought process that you put into reality and you can't just go to a dealership and buy that you can't get that kind of personalization from a car from the factory so there's my argument on that the fourth comment is just someone replying to my explanation comment just Straight up, call me a ricer. Yes, maybe he just saw JDM and just one of those people that thinks all Japanese cars are a ricer. I don't know. I don't really think that non-car people really grasp what a ricer actually is. Honestly, I don't think many car people actually grasp what a ricer actually is, but I'm um, moving on. All right, so fifth response is, I've always wondered if modified Honda owners, always gotta be Honda, always gotta be pulling the hot and car down on us, all right. I've always wondered if modified Honda owners know how silly their cars look and sound. There's a guy in my complex with a modded RSX with a four inch exhaust that sounds like a wet fart, and I'd love to know if he thinks that it sounds good on the outside. He probably does. So I actually responded to this one just saying pretty much all I'm gonna say right now. Probably most Honda owners aren't like that. Most Honda owners just want a small, nimble, lightweight car to just toy away with. Unfortunately, as cheap as they are to modify, a lot of dumbasses get their hands on them and end up doing things like putting a four inch exhaust on a four cylinder. Why do you need a four inch exhaust on a four cylinder? Between two and three inches is all you need. Just call it that. I wonder that myself a lot, like how these cheap Honda owners like end up getting these exhausts on their cars that sound so horrible, especially with like a RSX, a car with a K-series. You have to be reckless with your exhaust purchases to make a K-series sound bad. Like Skunk 2 Mega Power. That, like, it sounds awesome, it's not that expensive, just I don't understand what's so difficult about buying a proper exhaust. Alright, next response is, boys with expensive toys. Yeah, you're pretty much right. Next response is, especially for people who kit, kit out, okay, kit out cheaper cars. I just don't get it. I mean, hobbies shouldn't have an economic component to it, but dressing up a $20,000 car with just as much stuff, just as much stuff as what? Bad investment. It is also usually tacky and like they're trying too hard. But then I check my judgment and realize that some people may feel similar about some of my hobbies. So to each their own, if it makes them happy and proud, go for it. Respect that last part. I feel like this person, and I feel like a lot of non-car people, when they think of tuner cars or like that, they immediately think the Fast and the Furious. That movie came out in 2001. No one modifies their cars like that anymore, except for people who don't know how to modify their cars. Most car enthusiasts nowadays like to go for like a nice, clean, kind of, I guess, discreet look. Like a normal person probably wouldn't really bat an eye to a lot of the cars they see at car shows just driving on the street unless they have like wide bodies and stuff on them. What's with $20,000 being the magic number here? It is cheap for a new car, I suppose, but I guess that's cheap to non-car people. But as far as the whole money thing goes, a lot of non-car people seem to think that the more money you spend on a car, the better of car it's gonna be. That's not true at all. In a lot of cases it's true, but in a lot of cases it's not. Let me provide a real world example on how this is not the case. Say I'm shopping around for a car to you know buy and modify and I find a pre-owned Mustang GT. So 2015 S550 for $26,000. So I buy the Mustang and then I want to buy a supercharger. So I spend $7,700 on say a Roush R2300 stage three supercharger that can potentially boost the car to 727 horsepower. So I now have a $33,000 car with 727 horsepower. That is actually pretty wild to think about. So we have our $33,000 Mustang and we get a Porsche 911 Turbo, and they start out at $165,000, which is actually crazy. Like, I actually, I thought they started out like at $110,000. I didn't know they were that expensive. And mind you, no bias here. I would take, I would definitely take a 911 Turbo over a Mustang, but if you drag race those two things, which is the most basic form of racing, the Porsche is going to get walked by the Mustang. So a $165,000 car will be demolished in a drag race by a $33,000 car. 
So that's how the whole money thing works. So more expensive doesn't always mean better. Just the less money you have to spend on cars, the more innovative you gotta be. I.e. buying a decently priced, somewhat used Mustang and buying a supercharger kit for it. All right, so next response is, it's same as any other person with a hobby I don't understand. I'm glad it makes you happy. I don't get it, but I'm happy you're happy. This dude is a real MVP. So that's kind of all we ask for, is just acceptance. I mean, it's just a hobby. Like, everyone has their own hobbies, everyone has their own passions. Again, like the whole money thing, there are plenty of other hobbies that are expensive. Like, snowboarding is expensive, mountain biking is expensive, photography, I can 100% vouch for that. I don't even want to think about how much stuff, how much money I've spent on my photography equipment. A whole bunch of hobbies are expensive. It's always seemed that our expensive hobby has just been the most unacceptable. All right, so last response I got. I'm not in the cars, and I don't quite get people who are. It sounds bad, but I often think in a derogative manner towards those I see in expansive, expansive, expensive cars. For example, why do these people feel the need to try to show off? Are they desperate to impress others and think this is a way of going about it? I know some people are into cars as a hobby, but I've never met those sorts of people in my personal life. All right, so here's like another thing. There are 100% people in the world that buy super expensive cars like Ferraris, Lamborghinis, or buy super expensive stuff for their cars just to show off and get attention. We hate those kind of people. We cannot stand them. They are the bane of the car enthusiast's existence because that brings bad light to actual car enthusiasts and people who are actually into it as a hobby. Now, what bothers me is that a lot of car people think is that those who are able to buy expensive cars or those who buy expensive parts or stuff to modify our cars are just doing nothing but seeking attention. Like, that is our goal. That is not true at all. Like I said, there are a lot of people that do it just to seek attention and just show off. We hate them. They're terrible people. As I said, there are a lot of people that really have a hard time expecting, accepting that we're just doing this out of pure passion and trust me there are people who buy super expensive like supercars like lamborghinis ferraris koenigseggs etc out of pure passion just go to a track that you'll find them easily so it's kind of easy to think this way for non-car people because celebrities buy super expensive cars all the time modify them terribly or put super expensive stupid wraps on them they're doing it for attention, 100%. But the dude who's at the track every weekend with his Huracan Performante, probably not so much. All right, so that wraps up this video. And I'll probably be making a longer, more in-depth video about this kind of stuff in the future. But as of right now, I think this is a pretty good place to start. So honestly, I kind of, I get why people like would seriously question like car enthusiasts. Because cars, when cars were invented, they were really not intended to be something that was fun. I'm sure people thought they were fun. Like, you know, oh, I'm, I'm riding a carriage without a horse. I'm sure that was pretty awesome back then. But they were intended to be machines to get you from point A to point B. And billions of people drive these things every day and just see them as a machine. A lot of people just see driving as a chore. They see cars as just something to get them from point A to point B. So I imagine a lot of people would think like, how can someone possibly be so intrigued by this thing that I use every day and that possibly annoys me sometimes? How can someone possibly find this tool like fun? And honestly, I don't really have an answer for that question. Just kind of something that some people are born with. Sometimes some people have a nice push to get into cars. I think every car enthusiast out there has their own unique reasons for being so intrigued by these machines that people use every day and, and getting so deep into this hobby. But yeah, um, that's gonna be it and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Show it to one of your non-car friends, maybe shed some light on the subject, I don't know. See you guys next week with another video of some sort. All right, have a good day.